Hey everybody, today we're going to tie a parachute atoms. This is one of my very favorite flies. Um, I fish this all summer long. It's uh, obviously one of the most popular flies around, and that's probably why you're here trying to find out how to tie it. Um, I'm going to tie this one on a Tiemco 100 SPBL, and this sort of is my variation on it. I do do, do make a few uh, alterations to the original pattern to make it float better, make it uh, a little more visible, and uh, just altogether a prettier fly. Um, so I'm starting on a size 16. And the thread I'm going to use is Tiemco 16 Uh This is a thread you can't get anymore. They don't make this thread, or don't import this thread anymore. Um, so the closest thing you can get to it these days is um, Vivas 14 or 16 knot thread. And uh, I'm using it in a dark gray color. The exact shade doesn't make a huge difference because it's barely going to show on the fly at all. Um, so I'm going to take this thread, I'm going to start at about 75%. And I'm going to wrap back to the bend of the hook. So I'm all the way back on the last straight portion of the hook shank. And at this point, I'm going to take a spade hackle feather. And what a spade hackle feather is, is they're on the edges, the widest part of a dry fly rooster cape, rooster neck or rooster cape. Um, cape and neck mean the same thing, just for the record. Um, these are at the widest point on the outside edges. And these feathers have very long, very stiff barbs with very little web. And what I want to do is I'll get up out of that web, kind of discard the bottom half of the feather. And I want to stroke these fibers out away from the stem against the grain so they stand up like so. You can see I've got nice long stiff barbs uh, to make tails with. So I've got here already prepared a, uh, a brown spade feather as well as a grizzly spade feather. We're going to use mixed brown and grizzly. And there's a couple little tricks to, to doing a mixed tail. Um, what I'll do here with my brown feather is I'm going to pull out, on a size 16, it's probably 6 or 8 fibers. And I want to pull them out so that their tips become even. So I square their tips up like so. And I'll peel those off the feather. And I'm just going to take and tie those in at the bend of the hook here with just a single turn of thread for the moment. Then I'm going to take my grizzly and do the same thing. So I've got another clump that's about equal size. And I want to, I'm just using that first turn of thread there on the bend to hold those tails in place. I didn't worry about the length. I'm going to take my grizzly fibers and set them up so that the tails, the grizzly fibers are the same length as the brown. And then I can undo half a turn. And then I can tie these into length. And the length that I want is about a shank length long. We're pretty good right there. So I'm going to tie those in right at a shank length long. And I'm going to wrap forward over the butt ends to just short of that 75 or 80% point, And then trim those out. So now I'm going to bring my thread all the way up to the hook eye. And back again to that about 80% is really the, the spot I want the wing to go in. And for the wing, I'm going to use McFly Lawn. So, McFlylon is a heat-treated polypropylene. And you can see it's got a bit of sheen to it. Um, and that's one of the things I like about it is conventional polypropylene is very matte finished, very flat. Um, this has got a little bit of shine or sparkle to it um, that makes it a lot easier to see on the water. The heat treat also keeps this material from matting down on itself, uh, which is the other thing I like about it. So I'm going to cut, I've just got a whole strand there. And I've only cut about, oh, I'd say two inches. I don't need very much per fly. And this is typically how I'll do this, is I'll cut these into two inch long sections. And I'm going to separate these fibers. You can use your scissor tips or a wire dubbing brush to do that. Like so, so that they're separated a bit. And I'm gonna take, for a 16, I'm gonna take about half of the strand. And I like my wings to be a little on the heavy side. They show up better. Uh, I fish out of a boat a lot, so a fly that I have to manage and chase um, doesn't, uh, doesn't show up near as well. So I've got a half a strand here, so I've divided that strand in half. And I'm going to take this strand with my thread hanging right there at that 80% point. I'm going to tie it in at the center of its length with two turns, one right on top of the other. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is, and I'm tying left-handed. Um, but what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to grab the front of this wing and pull it toward me and the back end and pull it away from me. Um, so if I turn this a bit, you can sort of get the idea of what I'm doing. You can see when I make that turn, that turn of thread becomes diagonal. And that's what I'm that's what I'm shooting for there. So I'm going to pull this front end back toward me. I'm going to make two more wraps going from front to back, diagonal over the top of those two wraps. Basically, just creating spinner wings there. You can see that X is neat and tight and the wraps are one on top of the other. So I've got two wraps going one way and two wraps going the other way. Now, if you have problems with parachutes uh, when you tie the, the hackle in or when you go to post the hackle um, and your wing is floppy, it's because these wraps right here weren't tight. So to that end, I'm going to make another wrap each direction very tightly over the base of that wing. And then I'll pull both wings up above the hook. From here, what I'm going to do so I'm going to reach over my vise, I'm going to pick up my thread, and I'm going to come all the way around the base of the wing. You can see I came around the far side, I've got to reach over the vise, come all the way around the base of the wing, and I've crawled just a bit up off the base of the wing to bundle that wing into a single bunch. And that's just pinning that in place for the moment. Um, you can put one more turn in there if you like. And then always finish with a wrap around the hook in front of the wing. What that's going to do is anchor everything down um, so that if I lift my thread, everything doesn't come undone, which is catastrophic. Nobody wants that. So now I'm ready to tie in my hackles. And what I've got here are both a brown and a grizzly feather. And the way I've sized these is if you take these feathers and bend them around the base of the wing, you can see that those fibers extend right to the base of the tail. And that's the length that I'm looking for. That's how I size my parachute hackle. Um, that happens to be a size 16 feather on a hackle gauge um, on a size 16 hook. So I don't oversize my hackle. Um, some guys do, and you're welcome to do that. Um, I, I like the look of a the little cleaner look of the slightly smaller hackle. So I've got both a brown and a grizzly here, and I've got them stacked on top of each other, uh, just as if, as if they came off the hide. So inside to outside, and it doesn't matter which one's on top. And I'm going to strip the base of these two feathers. And the length that I want is from the hook eye to the base of the wing, and then this distance again up the wing. Um, I like to strip just a little bit extra bare stem so that I've got some bare stem beyond my tie down when I tie these feathers in. So I've got these two feathers, and I'm going to catch them behind the hook eye here. I'm going to wrap over them right up to the base of the wing. Now, at this point, these two feathers are tied in with their insides facing toward the hook. So the side that you're looking at there, this side here, is the insides of the feather. And you can see the length of the bare stem that is beyond that, that tie down where I've anchored in in front of the wing. Now what I'm going to do is take both of these feathers and pull them up so that they are now inside toward the wing. Now, if they don't lay perfectly even, and I'm not sure if this one will do it or not. If it does, I'll show you a cool trick to, to be able to flip one of those feathers over if they if they do become uneven, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, either way, hopefully it happens so that I can show you that, because if it doesn't happen, it's very easy. Um, but more often than not, it does happen. The feathers will twist where they don't stay inside to outside. But it's not a big deal. I'll show you a trick. So now that I've got those feathers standing up, I'm going to pick up my bobbin, and I'm going to invert it. Now you can see my bobbin tube is pointing down, and I'm going to start to wrap up the base of the wing over those bare stems. And these wraps are just slightly overlapping as I work up the base. And you can see the bobbin is upside down, and that's the whole trick to wrapping this parachute. I'm actually doing this with my material hand. I'm not using my thread hand. I'm using my material hand from the back of the hook, and I've got the bobbin completely upside down so the thread is perpendicular to the wing and the bobbin tube is parallel to the wing. So I've got those two feathers and I want to work up the base and what I always want to check before I start to work down is that I've still got some bare stem. This little bit of bare stem right here at the top of the post. I want to make sure that I've got some bare stem beyond my tie down um, as I make that post. Once I'm happy that I've got that, I'm going to come back down the post. And these wraps are firm. You can see I'm, I'm maneuvering that wing around as I'm pulling on it. And as I get closer to the base of the wing, I get tighter and tighter. Once I get all the way down, I'll come around the hook again just to lock everything in. And I've got my feathers posted to the wing. Now I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the bin. And you can see you can sort of tangle the feather and the, the wing together. 
I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the bend in preparation for the body. For the abdomen of my parachutes, and this is on almost all of them, um, I like to use goose biots. And what I've got here is a natural Canada goose goose biot. Um, and this is from a greater Canada. You can see these biots are very long. So I'm going to clip out one of these biots. And in the case of me tying left-handed, the biot that I want, it comes from the right wing. It's the first feather on the right wing. And what that does for me is you can see there's a bit of natural curve to these biots. I want to wrap the feather with its natural curve. And being a right feather tying, tying left-handed, this feather will have the ribbed edge on the forward side of the turn using the smooth black edge to cover that and make a, a non uh, stand up edge body, a smooth body, but with a dark rib. If I wanted a ribbed body, I'd either have to turn this feather over and tie it in, curve up, and wrap it against its natural curve, um, or use a feather from the left wing. So if you tie right handed, the answer is you want a feather from the left wing. So I'm going to take this feather, and one of the things with biots that, that people always seem to run into is they want to come in and take the, the biot and tie it in just by the very, very tip. Um, we don't want to do that here. That tip is very fine, um, so it's probably going to break. That's that's the, the big issue there. Um, but also, that tip is so narrow that we've got to make the wrap so close together on the first couple of turns that we really sort of screw up the, the taper and, and shape of the body. So what I want to do is I want to overlap that tip. You can see it's right up to the base of the wing. And then I'll capture it with my thread back here at the bend. And I'll wrap forward over the biot all the way up to the base of the wing. Now I'm going to take just a bit of Zappa Gap, and when I say a bit, I mean it. It's just a, a little shot, and I just run it down the top and bottom of the hook. If you're going to air, air on the thin side with Zappa Gap. It uh, gets very messy very quickly if you don't. So it's just a thin coat, and that's going to help toughen up this buyout body. These are actually really tough feathers if they've got a little zap underneath them, so it makes a big difference. I'm going to grab the tip of my feather in my hackle pliers, and I've got these in a pair of Jorgensen hackle tweezers. You can see how little of that feather I have to get a hold of. And I'm going to stand this feather up. I'm going to make the first turn at the bend. Now when I do this, you can see the stand-up edge is on the front of that turn. Get my finger in there. So what I'm going to do with the next turn is I want to overlap the back edge of that turn to cover that stand-up edge. And I'll just keep doing that as I work forward. If you also notice, there's no taper to the thread body right now, but we're going to end up with a tapered body when we get all said and done. So I'm going to continue forward, overlapping these turns, letting the back edge, the dark edge of this biot, cover that stand-up edge that's leading the turn right up to the base of the wing. And when I get here, I'm right down to the last little bit of biot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back my thread up and come around the biot before I release it from the hackle pliers and catch it with a couple of turns. Then I can release the pliers. You can see how that allowed me to tie that off right up at the very base of the feather. Then I can come in, I'm going to tilt my vise just a bit and trim that stub out. I'll wrap down over what was left there. You can see that biot body is just a beautifully segmented body that's also got a bit of a taper, and that comes from the overlap in the feather. As we wrap it forward, it sort of telescopes up the shank and makes a nicely tapered body. So now to finish off the thorax, I'm going to take a very small amount of gray superfine dubbing, and I'm going to apply it to this thin thread. So I'm going to have a very skinny strand of dubbing. You can always add a bit more, but if you've got too much, it's hard to, hard to manage. So I'm going to take this dubbing, and I'm going to use the bare thread to work up here toward the hook eye. And I'm going to start just behind the hook eye. I don't really leave much of an index point here. And you can see I can hold the wing and hackle back out of the way. And I'm going to dub tapering right up to the base of the wing. And I'm going to come behind the wing, and I'm going to cover that tie down from the biop. Now I can sort of work back and forth and fill all those voids in. And as I run out of dubbing, you can see I've got just about a turn of dubbing left here. 
As I run out of dubbing, I'm going to come up and come around the base of the wing. So this last turn of thread does not end going around the hook, but goes around the base of the wing. And in my case, tying left-handed, that's a clockwise turn. If you're tying right-handed, that turn should be counterclockwise. So now we're ready to wrap the hackle. And to wrap the hackle, I, I like to use the Tiemco rotary hackle pliers. These guys here, they've got a swivel. And I know the screen's not big enough to show all this, but they've got a swivel in the handle, so I'm able to wrap these feathers at a right angle. And what I want to do here is I want to separate the two feathers first from the wing. A lot of times when I sort of tangle them up, albeit on purpose, with the wing, I want to separate those wing strands out so that I don't have them bound up in the hackle. And of course, because you're all watching, I've got one really wound up in there. All right, so now we've got it cleaned out. Um, you can see there's some bare stem there beyond the tie down. And these feathers were tied as they sit here with the insides toward the wing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend them down so the inside is now up. This side here is the upside of the feather. I'm going to bring them around the back. And at this point, I'll attach my hackle, hackle pliers. Um, this is the inside of the feather here on the top side. So it's inside up. And I know there's a lot of debate about the right way to do it. Um, I realize that there's different ways to do it and different guys like different things. But all that being said, this is the right way to do it. Um, if you wrap the hackle with the inside up, you're wrapping the feather with the uh, curve up and it clears the path for the next turn. So I get a nice, clean, even hackle, uh, parachute hackle on this fly. If I wrap the feather with the, the hackle fibers pointing down, the curve inside of the feather pointing down, um, it's very hard to manage. It's not that it can't be done, but it's very hard to manage to keep those all lined up nice and neat in the wraps. Um, with this method, I'm going to have a clear path as I go down the post. So I'm going to start this feather, or these two feathers, at the top of the post. And you can see the bare stem is going to come about halfway around before I even start to have hackle fibers stick out. I'm going to start at the top of the post, and I'm going to pull down tight, and I'm going to put each turn under the last. And I'm just going to make about three turns. One underneath the last as I work my way down the post. Turn that just a bit so you get a little better angle on it. You can see there, I can tighten the feather up a bit. And now I'm going to reach over my vise and pick up my thread here. I'm going to drop my feathers on the near side of the hook. And I'm going to take the thread between the hackle and the dubbing about three turns around the base of the wing. Now when I get to this point, I can release my hackle, hackle pliers and my feathers are tied off. I'll turn my vise just a bit here. You can see my working thread here on the front side. Now I'm using this in my, in my material hand. So my thread is now coming from the base of the wing out over the hook eye. And to get the thread going around the hook, I'm going to drop the thread over the hook eye, come up on my near side, and down again. So now I'm going over the top of the hook away from me just as you conventionally would tie a parachute fly. Get a little more light in there and see where that thread wrap went. So once I've got that tied off and my thread is going around the hook, I'm going to come in and trim the feathers out. And when I do this, I'm going to come in from the back side here and trim just as close as I can to that post. Now you'll almost always have a couple that you miss. Let me turn this around. You can probably see them. You can see my trim right here. Actually with that camera you can really see it. You can see it better than I can. Um, anything that faces below the hook or isn't lined up in the in the parachute collar, you can trim out. I'm just going to clean that up a bit. You can see how parallel to the hook shank that hackle collar is. Now to whip finish, one of the nice things with this method is if I grab this wing, I can tilt that hackle back. And I can come in, and it'll actually stay there. I can come in with my whip finisher and work underneath it from the bottom side of the hook and do a three or four turn whip finish and draw up from the bottom to finish my thread. I'll trim my thread out. 
you can see we've got a beautiful hackle collar there. Now the length of the wing is sort of up to you. Um, most uh, parachutes that you buy have a much shorter wing than I like. Now I've repositioned the fly on the screen so that you can see my move to trim it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the fly upside down where I can get a hold of the wing here. I'm going to trim it about a shank length long. Now, that being said, having taught this fly in fly tying classes for years, um, when you trim a wing to length, you will almost always cut it too short. Um, in the case of a fly like an Adams, uh, where you've got to tie the wings into length, you'll almost always tie them too long. So when you're trimming a wing, you'll almost always trim it too short. So keep that in mind when you trim it off, um, that you want to err a little on the long side. You can always make it a little shorter, but you can't make it grow back. So that's the move to trim the wing. Here's our finished wing length, and you can see it's a shank length long. It's a tall wing. Um, and the reason I like that wing tall is it really shows up much better on the water uh, than if you were to cut that down much shorter. That uh, Again, this is one of those things that I've always said, you know, I can trim the wing shorter on the water if I need to, but I'll leave it long uh, just in case I decide that's what I want. And uh, in the case of... Uh, you know, every instance I've never once have I trimmed that wing shorter. Um, so a whole shank length long on the wing. And you can see, especially with this camera view, we've got a really clean, good view of this, um, how neat those hackle wraps line up as they come down the post. You know, on both sides all the way around. You can see our neatly segmented body with that biot. The thing I like about the biot is biots are not necessarily inherently buoyant, but what biots do that dubbing doesn't, is they don't absorb water or fish slime. Um, and all I do when I go fishing is catch piles and piles of fish. Um, so something that doesn't absorb that fish slime that I don't have to constantly dry the fly out uh, makes a huge difference in the amount of fish I catch. So um, if you want to catch piles and piles of fish every day, that's how you do a, a parachute Adam's body. Now the final step on a parachute, and this is something I do on all of them, so I'm going to take and turn the fly to its side. And I'm going to take some thin head cement and I'm going to put a drop right there on the hackle. And hopefully this will show well. You can see it bleed down right into the base of the post. Now you don't want so much that it will bleed into the dubbing. But you can see how that sort of just capillary actions right down into the, into the stem of the feather. And that will go into the base of the post, into the base of the wing post, and harden up those thread wraps and kind of lock everything in. Once that's all dry, um, that is a solid, solid wing, and you can say I put a little extra on there. It's starting to sink into the dubbing, but um, you get the idea. I had to put a little extra on there to, to make it obvious. Um, and that is our finished parachute, Adam. So that's uh, um, about as good a fly as it gets. That is a visible, very durable, uh, very buoyant um, fish catching machine. Um, tie some up. Now you know how. Um, like I say, there's lots of lots of other ways to do it, and Famous last words. They're all wrong. Do it this way. Thanks for watching. Okay, I realized that I uh, forgot to show you the trick in the case that your two feathers don't stay aligned inside to outside. Um, so what I've done here is I've whipped up another one real quick and I've tied these two feathers in on purpose um, incorrectly. So that feather is has got the outside of the feather facing you, the brown feather. And the grizzly feather has got the inside of the feather facing you. So um, those two feathers are lined up the wrong way. We want them both to, to line up inside up as I bend them around uh, the parachute post. Um, so what I want to do, um, my brown feather, I can fairly easily come around and end up with the inside up. So that feather is going to be managed just fine. Um, the grizzly feather is going to cause us some trouble. Um, and here's the, here's the trick to this. What I want to do is take the grizzly feather, and you can see that's inside toward you. And I will fold it so that it comes around inside up. Once I've got that, then I can take my brown feather and arrange it along the inside as well. I'll stack those two feathers right on top of each other, like so, and pull tight on them. You can see how I've just folded those stems so that they line up correctly. Um, again, it's just a matter of how you position those. Now I'll show you what the actual wrap looks like. So um, rather than treat these as one unit, I'm going to bring my brown feather around 
and bring my grizzly feather down under it and then cup them together. So now I've got the insides facing up. The side that you're seeing there, they're still kind of quartering. Um, this is the outside of the feather on this side, on both of them. So I've just folded those to go the right direction. I'll grab them in my hackle pliers and I'll start my turn here at the top of the post. One turn under the last, about three turns, pull everything tight. Pick up my thread on the far side of the hook. I want to come under all that hackle. About three turns. Come down over the hook eye, up over the hook eye. And I can come in and trim my feathers out here on my near side. So there's your trick to turn feathers that weren't going the right direction to feathers that are going the right direction. Because that just occasionally happens. The stems of the feathers aren't as consistent as we'd like to believe all the time. So um, you can see how you can kind of clean that up a bit. And we've got inside up on both of those feathers. So there's your trick. Um, now you know all of them. Have fun.